Jujutsu Kaisen Shibuya Incident Arc featured some of the best fights ever seen within the series, with crazy choreography, incredible character moments, and ramifications on the plot that still persist in the manga today. So with this video, I wanted to go through and rank all of the fights in the Shibuya Incident, taking into account the choreography, emotional impact, plot relevance, and overall cool factor of both the anime and manga versions to see which fight comes out on top. At number 18, we have Mei Mei vs. Niji Ebina. Most of you probably don't even know who the person Mei Mei is fighting even is, and I don't blame you. This random curse user shows up to confront Mei Mei on the train tracks and gets bodied off screen and we only see Mei Mei deliver the final blow. Shibuya as a whole would not change if this fight were to be removed, and we don't even see the actual fight, which for that goes at the bottom of the list. At number 17, we have Kusakabe vs. Geto's group. This fight really consists of people talking before Kusakabe bodies some random curse users with a simple domain, and that's it. It's higher than Mei Mei's fight because we at least see some action that the anime portrays pretty well, and has a little more plot relevance since it allows Kusakabe and Panda to meet Tsukuna, but that's really about it. Coming in at number 16, we have Jogo vs. Maki, Naobito, and Nanami. Just like the previous two entries, this fight is really quick and is mostly just a showing of Jogo's speed and strength. The anime does a pretty decent job portraying it, and Naobito's projection sorcery looks pretty cool here. That, along with the fact that this fight carries heavier plot implications, nets at a higher spot than the previous two fights. At number 15, we have Yuji vs. the Grasshopper Curse. While this fight is actually lacking in terms of plot relevance compared to the previous two fights, I think its choreography makes up for that. All of the previous entries have been really quick, almost boring fights, while this one at least has some movement. It doesn't look that great in the anime with the ghosting and dimming, and also the weirdly stiff movements, but the manga does a really good job portraying Yuji's speed and power, making this fight a relatively entertaining read and getting its spot at number 15. At number 14, we have Nanami vs. the Transfigured Humans. This fight is literally like three pages in the manga, but the anime extends this out a little longer and really amps up the emotional impact. Obviously, since this fight ends with Nanami dying, it has some pretty extensive plot implications, and the image of a half-burned Nanami tearing his way through a pack of transfigured humans is pretty cool, so he gets the number 14 spot. At number 13, we have Toji vs. Ogami. This fight is really short, with the bulk of it being just Toji and Ogami talking, but Toji is cool, and the way the anime portrays Toji's speed as he one-shots Ogami is really cool, so he gets the number 13 spot. For spot number 12, we have Mei Mei vs. Smallpox Deity. This fight is alright in the manga, but I really like the anime's portrayal of the whole thing, so it gets a little boost for that. It also has heavier plot implications since Mei Mei gets the fight pseudo ghetto after this, so it lands at number 12. At number 11, we have Nobura, Nanami vs. Haruta. This fight is a bit longer in the anime, and I like how they extend the fight a little bit before Nanami pulls up. They even take the time to hint at Haruta's curse technique, which I thought was a neat addition. The Nanami portion of both the anime and manga are both really cool, so even though this fight lacks in emotional impact and plot relevance, Jack Nanami slapping around Haruta never gets old, so it gets the 11th spot. At number 10, we have Ino vs. Ogami and her grandkid. This fight in the manga is pretty decent, giving readers a chance to see what Ino can do, and the way the anime portrays the quick hand-to-hand -hand Ino has with her grandson is honestly really well animated. That, along with the fact that this is the fight that Toji gets revived in, means that the fight is automatically higher up on the list, and seeing Toji body Ino in the anime was also really cool. From this point onwards, I would argue that none of these fights are bad. They all have pretty high plot relevance, nice character moments, good choreography, and their general cool factors are just really high. It's just that, when looking at an arc as action-packed as Shibuya, some fights are just bound to be lower than others, even if the fight itself is still really good. One fight lower down on the list might actually be your favorite, and I wouldn't blame you. These fights generally make up some of the more memorable moments of JJK. With that in mind, let's take a look at the rest of the fights. At number 9, we have Yuji and Megami vs. Awasaka. I really enjoy the tactical aspect of this fight, 
with their whole plan to drop Awasaga off Shibuya Tower making for a super exciting opener, and Megami's deduction of Inverse being a great way to progress the fight forward. The anime does a pretty good job with the effects, and the manga does a great job portraying the raw speed and power both Yuji and Megumi put into their attacks only for them to do nothing. Even though I think the action is a bit lacking in the anime compared to some of the later entries, its manga counterpart makes up for that, and this fight was integral to the progression of Chibuya since the barrier blocking out sorcerers was removed at the end of this fight, so overall pretty good fight and by no means bad. At number 8, we have the Sorcerers vs. Pseudo Ghetto and Rame. This fight unfortunately suffered the tail end of the production issues in the anime, making it less fluid and dynamic compared to the other fights on this list, but it's definitely not bad. Rame's technique looks great, Chosa's exchange with Fake Ghetto was done really well, and they really gave blood manipulation and Chosa a lot of extra time to shine, showing off moves that the manga never had him do, and his hand to hand exchange with Fake Ghetto was pretty cool to watch as well. This fight also serves as the last fight to Shibuya, and is the one where the sorcerers lose since they can't retrieve the prison realm, along with reintroducing Yuki into the story, giving it very high plot significance as well. At number 7, we have Megumi vs Toji. If we were just taking a look at the manga version of this fight, I would have put it way lower on the list. But the anime does such a great job portraying the stat difference between Toji and Megumi that I had to give it a higher spot. Toji's speed is always portrayed in some incredible ways, and the animation for this entire fight was absolutely amazing. Toji and Megumi's movements were fluid and snappy, and the anime stepped it up with the creativity aspect, even having Megumi's bunnies start throwing hands. And Toji's final character moment of realizing he's fighting his own son gives this fight a bit of an emotional appeal as well. Overall, really good fight. For number 6, we have the Sorcerers vs Dagon. While the first part of this fight in the anime had a pretty rough start, it wasn't all bad. I wasn't a huge fan of the way the anime cranked up the saturation in Dagon's domain, and the overall stiff portrayal of movement and everything leading up to Toji's invasion of the domain looked a little off, but the fight isn't bad. The manga had some really solid action, and things like Naobito's speed were shown off in a nice way and I overall enjoyed the fight the whole way through. But the part of this fight that everyone likes is Toji's entry into the domain and it's just so cool. The narrator talking about Toji being the one who left it all behind, combined with his stealing a playful cloud and walking up to Dagon without saying a word, already sets up their fight to be incredible. And in the anime, the animation was incredible. Toji flinging Dagon around in the anime and the manga looked incredible. The extra scenes added in the anime make it that much better. Really nice fight overall. Next up, at the number 5 spot, we have Gojo vs the Disaster Curses. I know some of you think it's blasphemy to not have this fight in the top 2, but hear me out. This fight was really good. The point 2 domain was hype, seeing Gojo continue to cook the Disaster Curses despite holding back was hype, and this fight arguably has the highest plot relevance since it's literally the whole point of Shibuya. But the main thing that holds this fight back from being at the top is not what the fight does, but what it doesn't do. Put simply, I am a meathead. I like when characters throw hands in a way that looks cool. And while I'm not saying that the hand-to-hand -hand combat in this fight doesn't look cool, compared to the other ones on this list, it just doesn't look as good. The anime definitely beefed up the hand-to-hand -hand, and I love the rendition of Gojo tearing through the transfigured humans, but the general hand-to-hand -hand is something I value greatly, and it's something I think this fight does a little worse compared to the fights higher up on this list, which is why it sits at the number 5 spot. Moving on to our number 4 fight, we have Yuji vs Choso. I just got done talking about how much I enjoy strong hand-to-hand -hand combat, so you'd think this fight, THE fight that's all about hands, would be like top 1 on the list, but no. And I say that for just one minor nitpick. Mostly in terms of the manga, I think the bathroom portion of this fight suffers from some pacing problems. The hand-to-hand -hand portion before Yuji's liver is pierced is, in my opinion, too short. We get a few panels of Yuji and Choso fighting before the whole fight comes to a screeching halt as Yuji gets his liver pierced and then we enter into like 5 minutes of an inner monologue and narration. The anime helps alleviate this pain by just extending the hand-to-hand -hand before Yuji's liver is pierced, but since I'm accounting for both the anime and manga, I had to mention that. Other than that though, this fight was fantastic. The hands that were swapped look great in both the anime and the manga, and I love the anime's depiction of piercing blood as a laser beam. 
The whole bathroom portion in the anime was also made even better, with more creative uses of blood manipulation, incredible animation, and improved pacing from the manga. Of course, the plot relevance is pretty high, since it sets up Chosa's revelation about Yuji later in the arc, along with being the first big L that Yuji takes that helps further his character development. So overall, great fight. Entering into our top three, we have Sukuna vs. Jogo. This fight had no reason to go so hard in the anime. The animation, sound design, voice acting, even just the introduction as a building blows up and everyone hears Sukuna laughing makes this fight incredible. Sukuna's sudden reveal of his fire arrow was also really cool. It has left JJK fans speculating on what it actually is for like years now. While this fight isn't necessarily the most important, I just can't get over the presentation. And the fight is incredible in the manga too. Of course, we can't just talk about this fight without talking about Sukuna's famous speech to Jogo. And I just love when JJK characters start talking about their philosophy and seeing Sukuna tell Jogo what it really takes to be the strongest made for an incredible scene that has stuck with me to this day. I don't really have any gripes with this fight, it's just solid, chaotic action with incredible choreography, great animation, a solid level of importance to the story, more so than the previous fights, which is why it's number 3 on the list. Our runner up for the best fight in Shibuya is Sukuna vs Maharaga. This fight was peak. Episode 17 of JJK Season 2 might actually go down in history as one of the best looking, most ambitious episodes of anime, and it's just crazy to see how good this episode looks. There's a few weird Maharaga drawings, but those drawbacks are nothing compared to what this fight has. I honestly find it kind of crazy to see how the animators put so much work into a fight that lasted less than two chapters in the manga. It's just great to rewatch this episode. Everything is shown beautifully, with super creative takes on how Sukuna vs Maharaga went in the manga. Malevolent Shrine looked great, Sukuna's slashes looked great, and Maharaga's debut really showed off how this beast could have taken on a six eyes limitless user like Gojo. And this fight is one of the most important for Yuji's overall character development, having effects that persist even in the manga today. Overall, it's just a phenomenal fight all around, in the manga, and especially in the anime, which is why it's number two. For the best fight in Shibuya, we have none other than Yuji vs Mahito. What else can I say? This fight has everything. Great animation, incredible action, insanely hype moments, deep emotional impact, and massive plot relevance all wrapped up into a fight that had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. Despite this fight facing the drawbacks of the production schedule, it still managed to look great in the anime and in general, it's just paced really well. Coming off the heels of Nanami dying, the adrenaline is rushing, you hate Mahito just as much as Yuji does, and you feel for every hit and loss that he takes as he tries to beat Mahito down. So when Nobura comes in clutch with resonance and Yuji begins to put the hands on Mahito, you feel that same rush of hope only to have it crushed once again. And by that point, Yuji is done and so are you. Toto coming in to initiate phase 2 of the fight really brings back life into the fight, and the three fighters each landing their own black flash just elevates this fight even higher. So when the fight reaches its final phase, reducing it back down to just Yuji versus Mahito, you feel the tension. Mahito's instant spirit body distorted killing looks great, and seeing Toto have his final moment with a boogie woogie fake out to let Yuji land his black flash was absolutely cathartic. And when everything's said and done and all that's left is for Yuji to deliver the killing blow to Mahito, you feel a certain sense of satisfaction. Yuji's I am you speech goes crazy, and the decision to portray the scene as a wolf hunting down a rabbit just makes it that much better. And the voice acting went crazy. Mahito's voice actor went crazy. So yeah, with all that being said, there just isn't much you could say to detract from this fight has everything I wanted and more, and for that, I can absolutely say that Yuji vs Mahito is the best fight of Shibuya.